People often ask, what happens when markets fail? Uh, what then? Well, the answer is actually, uh, they often put it right afterwards. It causes some distress in between. So what happens when markets go crazy and people pursue all kinds of investments like tulips in Amsterdam or housing or any other asset bubble? Well, there comes a time when doomf, the big crash comes, and there's a bit of dislocation, people lose a lot of money and they start behaving more sensibly in future until the next bubble comes along and other people start behaving foolishly again. What happens when markets aren't allowed to work? For example, because someone has a monopoly, they've cornered the supply of something. Most of the companies in, in, the, uh, in, in the top 10 of the FTSE 100 were not there 30 years ago. Uh, it's a continual churn. Uh, they get complacent and new competitors come along with a different act and take their place. Some people say that markets fail because they're not fair. The nurse gives devoted service for many hours and gets a pittance of the reward some rock star gets for doing one and a half hours in a recording studio. Well, markets aren't supposed to be fair. They're supposed to be about allocating resources and providing goods and services that people will pay for. And the fact is that devoted though the nurses' services are, they affect very few people. Whereas millions of people worldwide will pay a few cents each to get the recording of the rock star. Very often people point to what they call market failure and say, ah, that's why the government is justified in stepping in. To which the reply is, what about government failure? You see, government failure is a lot more common than market failure. Sometimes people point to the environment and they say, this is a case where markets have failed. And it's not so. It's a case where there are no markets and people don't have the incentives. Now, in cases where markets have been introduced to preserve environmental quality, they've worked brilliantly. Iceland protected its fisheries by allocating quotas to fishermen, and which they could buy and sell. In Botswana, they gave local villagers a stake in the elephants, so they were worth money to them. And that means the villagers conserved the environment and elephant numbers multiplied. In Kenya, where they were absolutely protected, their numbers declined. Moral of the story, give people an economic incentive in doing the right environmental things. In cases where, where markets aren't being allowed to operate and you want people to behave in what are regarded as responsible ways, you've fundamentally got three ways of moving the donkey. You can say giddy up and hope that the thing moves. It is your responsibility to behave in this way, but the donkey doesn't tend to listen. You can beat it with a stick. And while that does work to some extent, the donkey doesn't like it. Politicians who use punitive taxes and laws don't tend to get re-elected. The third way is to dangle a carrot in front of the donkey's nose and say, there, oh, look at these tax incentives you get for using zero polluting cars. And people like that and they tend to behave accordingly. In the absence of market mechanisms, carrots are the best method. So what about market failure? Well, it isn't usually a case of market failure. It's a case of markets not being allowed to operate. And the best solution every time is to introduce markets so they do work, so that people will be motivated to behave differently. Madsen Perry attempted to prove once again that economics is fun.